past 24 years, Sharon Green has marked her daughter Becky's death by placing flowers at the roadside in Sheffield, where she was tragically killed while crossing the road aged just 13. But this year, Sharon discovered a verse from a poem attached to the railings. It said, I've seen this act of sweet remembrance for over 20 years. Flowers on the railings full of tenderness and tears. All the colours of the rainbow wrapped up in a pretty bow. The flowers on the railings for a love that won't let go. Well, Sharon's younger daughter, Emma, posted an appeal on Facebook to find the anonymous writer and was put in touch with a stranger called Peter Fernley. And Sharon joins us now alongside her daughter, Emma. Um, it's lovely to see you, but a terrible tragedy behind all of this, Sharon, because you lost your beloved daughter, Becky. Tell us about that. Back in 1996, wasn't it, yes. that you lost her at this road crossing? She was just 13 she years was, old yes. at the time. Yes. And uh, you'd allowed her to go out. She wanted to it go was to... the a... first time ever I'd let her go out on, on her, her own. own. Uh, the uh, leisure centre had organised a rollerblade evening uh, for the young under-15s. Yeah. And it was on a Saturday evening, so... I let her go with a cousin. And I didn't live too far away from there. Just a few moments away, weren't you? A couple, yes. Five, ten minutes away. Yes. And she begged you that she could walk home on her own. She did with a cousin, but she never came home. Uh, the rollerblading started at 6 p.m. and finished at 8. And at 10 past 8, I got a knock on the door saying that Rebecca had died. It's, uh, you know, I've got four kids, Susanna has three. We've often talked about, you can't think of anything worse. No. And the strength that people find as parents when they lose a child never ceases to amaze me. Um, every year you've remembered her with leaving flowers at this spot. Were you aware that people were noticing? Did you have any idea of that? Not at all. So for you, it was just a, a personal thing for you and your daughter? I always put it there. Uh, to sort of, like, get people to think that it's a leisure centre, children go there every day, and they cross on that same crossing. And I always put it there for people, like, don't take drugs mm. when you're driving, don't drink when you're driving. Mm. It's young lives that they're taking. So I've always just gone and put them there for the past 24 years. On the 20th of January, On the 20th which of is January. the anniversary yeah. of, of Becky's death. Then you went to put the flowers, and what did you discover someone had left? Well, when we got there, I thought it was a notice from the council <laughs> saying, please don't put these flowers here. Mm. And my husband was stood with me, and he said, Sharon, I really think you need to stand back and read this. And we took it off the railings, and my husband and I, Adrian, crossed the road and stood and read the poem. And I was just so overwhelmed to think that somebody had been driving past, commuting to work for the past 20 years, had noticed that these flowers was there. Well, you've never met uh, personally Never. The man that wrote this. Never. But he's he's here. He's in the studio. In fact, he's just a few feet away. His and we're going to bring him in. Peter Fernley. Peter Fernley. Who wrote these oh, words that move you so much. Oh, Lovely to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. And you, Emma. Me too. Um, it's the first time you've met. Um, yeah. Peter, tell us what inspired you to, to leave this. Well, I'd been, I'd been driving past the flowers um, every year, like you say, for over 20 yeah. years. Uh, and every time I saw them, I thought it was such a touching tribute. And, um, and I got used to seeing them appear in January. My wife's birthday is on the 21st of January. Mm -hmm. And so there was, there was a trigger that I, 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 under, you know, I, I looked out for them mm -hmm. around about the third week in January every year. And, and I've been a songwriter for a long time, just an amateur musician and songwriter. Uh, and, and so it was sort of natural for me to try and put those feelings mm. and, and write... A, a, I wanted to write a tribute to you, um, just to say that there were other people there that were, that were seeing the flowers, that had noticed your tribute, 
and just wanted to share some love, really. Mm. Uh, and it's and... such a lovely, simple, selfless. It's such a powerful thing you did, and the impact that it had yeah. on all of you. And Emma, you know, you lost your older sister. Your older yeah. sister. Um, you'll have known what that did to your whole family and your mum in particular. Um, yeah. When you heard what Peter had done, what were your thoughts? I thought it was lovely. Um, my mum sent me a picture of it and she said, can you put this photo on Facebook, see if we can find out who's done it. Mm. Um, we didn't think it was one of her friends, because mm. uh, I often post on Facebook about Becky. Um, so she gave me the photo and posted it on Facebook. I'm like, you do know this is going to be a needle in a haystack to find it. Mm. And my phone went absolutely ballistic uh, from about 8pm while 6am the next morning, just constantly pinging away notifications. Um, Someone then put a link on to my Facebook page saying there's this YouTube video. Uh, so I watched the video and they were like, it's by this man called Peter Fernley. Mm -hmm. Have you tried contacting him? And then the next morning, Peter messaged me. Peter, I wonder if this you... Is, this could... is the word set to music that we're listening to. That's now. right, yes. I wonder if you could just read some of the poem to us. Well, maybe we could listen to the song because it's all set to music. Let's maybe turn it up a bit. Let's listen to this. This time every year I've seen this act of sweet remembrance for over 20 years.